Elmo, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you, so send us an email with your question or your comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Com. Well, today we have a wonderful yeah. guest. His name is David Corollo. He is the executive director of the World Apostolate of Fatima. You go to the website called bluearmy.com. And we're delighted. We've had him on our show before yes. during the 100th anniversary, yes. which is so beautiful. Yep. And he's going to tell us all about that and all the beautiful things that Our Lady is doing in especially, the world. Especially in this month with such an emphasis on Our Lady. And just recently we celebrated uh, the apparition, the miracle of the sun. And so that's all happening. And it's so wonderful to have a relationship with Our Lady. I didn't always have that relationship. Mm -hmm. She had a relationship with me, but I didn't have much of a relationship with her. And as I yield to her, as we yield to her, and uh, just, just to to know who she is more fully. Very special presence, you know, with Our Lady. And I was reading a particular scripture that I wanted to share today, um, and it will lead into Our Lady. The, the verse is from Romans, I think it's 8.32. Um, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else with him? Yeah. Um, but he who did not spare his own son, and he's the key that, that stuck out to me, but handed him over for us all. You know, with, with all the love that was given to Jesus mm -hmm. and all that happened to him and then all of the rejection and lies and filth that was sent his way in his crucifixion and suffering and pain, you know, can't even imagine all that he went through and all of his purity. What is this that the Father handed him over? Mm. But this redemption would lead to great things and so many wonderful things, the salvation of all you know, mankind and, and so much more, the redemption of the whole world and the whole created order. And, and God wants to give us everything with him, so, right? But handed him over. And I thought, who, is the, who, is the, who did he hand him over to? Or mm. what did he hand him over to? And I thought, he handed him over to Our Lady. Yes. That's the first handing over, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He handed him over for us all, but he handed him over first to Our Lady, and she handed him over. Mm -hmm. You know, she said, yes, I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. You know, I, I will do whatever. Yes, this fiat, yes. But she was just like the Heavenly Father, that she handed her son over for the salvation of the world, to the joys, to the sorrows, to fellowship, but also to, to the rejection, the suffering, the shame, and the scourging, and, and so on, you know? She handed him over, too. I mean, it's, it's just profound when you ponder mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and the beautiful thing about our Blessed Mother is she is always, whether you believe this or not in Protestant land, she is always pointing and mm -hmm. drawing us deep into the heart of Jesus. I thought I loved Jesus, I got Jesus, I became Catholic, fell in love with our Blessed Mother, and I am more in love with Amen. Jesus. And I thought, how is that possible? But it is possible. And that's what she does for you and she does for me and she does for the whole world. Amen. So we're excited to have David with us today, the Executive Director of World Apostolate of Fatima. Go to the website, bluearmy.com. Don't go away, we'll be right back. at home with Jim and Joy and our guest today is David Carollo. He is the executive director of World Apostolate of Fatima. You could go to their website bluearmy.com. Well David we want to welcome you back to at home. We're delighted to have Great you. To be here. Yeah. So much has happened since the last time you were here. Yes. But we want you to tell our family a little bit home, home a little bit about how you got involved with the Blue Army, with this fabulous apostolate, so they can know the side of David and his precious heart. There we go. Well, it, it was always in my family. My parents were the founders of the Blue Army in the division in Chicago in the mid-50s when I was born, okay? So throughout my life, it was always there. I mean, of course, 
then you be go you get older you go to high school and you know everything then you go to college you know even more than everything of right course. of course you know then you get a little older and you realize wow I my parents nothing. my parents <laughs> knew a few things you know <laughs> but it was always in my heart i mean somewhere um and um i started going as a delegate to our national council meeting in new jersey oh, probably in the early 90s late 80s early 90s i guess and um didn't have time for much running a business and that i was pretty busy but um but then in the latter part of the 90s they convinced me to run for a board position which i did and then before i knew it i was president of the board of trustees so for for seven years i was the the i was the um president of the board of trustees okay. of course we have our executive director and others and then came 2012 when our director late 2011 he left and so now we have this dilemma we have to fill this hole as a board you know and you're and you're always looking for you know say the perfect person well they don't exist okay mm -hmm. but what you look for is somebody who has some of the the say the business abilities because we're not just a small apostolate we are a major shrine you know in an apostolate in this country we have a hotel retreat center in portugal mm -hmm. um, so um, we just said look why don't we look within the board and it just fell in place while well, my wife and i discussed it and so for six years i've been the executive director wow. yeah so it's been nice yeah they unpack for us the history of the Blue Army World Apostolate of Fatima, sure. um, because I was not familiar with it at all until I went to your website and started reading about the yeah. founders, yeah. the timing of this whole thing, I guess in 1947 or so, 47. what's going on there, mm -hmm. and the founders are absolutely amazing to learn about and their story, so please bring that to well, us. Come into the time, it's 1947, 30 years after the apparitions. Sister Lucia was a little bit uncomfortable that the Fatima message was not really being brought to the world like she thought it would. But keep in mind, two world wars. Europe was in a shambles, we know that. So it took a couple of brazen Americans, quite frankly, that had you know, the infrastructure and the, and the resources um, to put something together. Monsignor Harold Colgan, a priest in New Jersey, um, was, he, he had a very severe heart attack and he was, he was really dying. And in 1947, you didn't have the same type of surgical procedures as came a few years later. And he just prayed to Our Lady, very devoted to Our Lady of Fatima. And he said, he said, cure me and I'll spend the rest of my days promoting your message, okay? Wow. Be careful what you ask for, right. right? He walked out of that hospital later that week, miraculously, truly. And the doctor said, they have no explanation as to why that weak heart of his came back the way it did, but in fact it did. And soon after that, from the pulpit of his parish, he called for, remember it's 1947, it's the beginning of the Cold War now. Right. Our Lady had said, you know, many things. One of them was Russia would spread her errors, okay? Right. Look what had happened. 1947, after the war, Eastern Europe where it was captive, okay? Russia's errors had spread substantially. And he called for, from his pulpit, a blue army of prayer to counter the red army of atheistic communism. And that's where it really began. So he coined that phrase? He coined that phrase. That's wow. where Blue Army came from. Powerful. And then he, he connected, people put him together with John Hafford. John Hafford was a Carmelite. Uh, he, had, he was publishing a Carmelite paper, a layman. He had been a seminarian, but then later got married. Very devoted to Our Lady. And the two of them joined forces, and they really they developed this apostolate. Uh, really, John Hafford was the man out there. Father Monsignor Colgan was the, the spiritual backing. He was the priest, you know. And together, they, they built something just amazing. Yeah. And uh, John Hafford then went forward, and he, he, he made uh, connections with, uh, he said, two, th two people he had to speak with. One of them was, of course, Sister Lucia. The other one was Padre Pio. Because Padre Pio had this great, great devotion to the rosary. And so he met with, with Sister Lucia, and he asked her, you know, I, would you help me develop something here? And she was so thrilled to see this now finally, she saw somebody who could bring it to the world. Yeah. And he sat with her and developed the pledge, the pledge yeah. which, I, which I have right yeah. here. Yeah. And this pledge here what is the simple membership into our organization that people, people fill out. And it's believed that 20 million or more people worldwide sign this pledge. Yeah, I was sitting here wondering you know, as the Monsignor began and Hafford began, what were they asking people to do? Well, you know, what was, and so this is a part of what, there, there it is right is it, there because what John are some Hafford, of the key things in here? What were they asked yeah. to do? Well, pray the rosary, okay, you know, live according to your state in life, live chastity according to your state in life, and the most important thing, you know, live your daily duty. 
If you're a husband, be the best husband, the best wife, you know. If you're a priest, be the best priest. John Hafford asked Sister Lucia, what is the most important part of the message? You know, what is the one thing Our Lady wanted? And he said, the rosary, right? And she goes, no. She goes, become holy. That's what he told, that's what she told him. You have to become holy, because that's what the Fatima message is all about, you know. We ask people to learn, live, and spread the message. But if you're not living it, you can't spread it. You cannot give what you do not have. Mm -hmm. And that's really where it came from. It really was become holy. And then, then more things like make reparation for sin. Because yeah. look at the children. What, what did they live? The two, the two young ones, Jacinta and Francisco, saints now, right. they lived the simple, simple acts of reparation. They offered their lives. Are you willing to offer your lives in prayer and reparation, in supplication for sin? Are you willing to accept what God sends your way, you know, yeah. for the conversion of sinners primarily and for reparation for your own life. That's a big, yeah. so the, the message revolves around prayer, repentance, yeah. reparation, intercession. Right. Um, what other components are there with the message of Fatima, you would say, are those the key ones? Well, yeah. those are the key ones, and I mean. Russia praying for Russia. Yeah. Well, Our Lady, in, in the messages, she pointed to many things, many things that could happen, Nothing would happen, remember that. Okay. It's all in our hands, mm -hmm. okay? She said, if my requests are not heeded, okay? Well, this war will end, World War I, right? Yeah. Okay, another greater war will happen. Look what happened, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then if my requests are not heeded, you know, right. that's, that's, the big, that's the big operable statement here. And then, you know, she said many other things, you know, nations could be annihilated, right. wow. That was strong, okay? And we sit back and say nations could be annihilated. Wow, well, nuclear war, well, I guess we avoided that one, huh? Well, maybe, okay, <laughs> but look at, look at what's happening in our world today mm -hmm. with contraception and abortion. Nations are being annihilated. That's right. Okay, okay. Your family show, you understand that. You have a family, you know how important that is. And I think this is more, it's the attitude, because we're, we're doing a self-annihilation by walking away from God, mm -hmm. okay? The more we walk away from God, we stop living according to natural law. Well, this, these are the consequences. So, you know, sure, can that, can that nuclear holocaust happen? Yeah, in 1947, when our founders got together, that was two years after the A-bomb, that was a wake-up call for the world, let's be honest. I mean, more than everything else that happened in the war, thank God it was on, well, I say on our, <laughs> we possessed it, we used it. I mean, people can argue the morality of using it, you know, that's, that's you know, history. Right. But the, the fact is, you know, it could have been, it could have annihilated the world. Mm -hmm. Now, and I guess we have to always look at this philosophically, you know, you know, but I do believe that we are annihilating ourselves, not only by contraception and abortion, but by just generally moving away from the, from the precepts of God. Mm -hmm. By choosing to do our life on our own terms, right? Exactly. You where, know. Where, when we're asking to be holy, yeah. Well, the first thing you have to be is selfless. Absolutely. You have to be prayerful. Right. And those are the ways that are going to make you holy. And yeah. how many people don't pray the rosary? How right. many people, well, it's just a prayer. It doesn't really matter. But uh, it takes us into the heart of our God where we can fall madly in love with Jesus again right. and again and again. That's right. Well, Padre Pio, also John Hafford met with Padre Pio. And Padre Pio said he, he, what he loved about this apostolate is our prayer was the rosary, mm -hmm. okay? What did he call the rosary? The weapon, right. the weapon for spiritual battle. You know, this word, the word army, as the years went on and we spread to other nations, there are countries that weren't comfortable with the word army, so we morphed into being the world apostate of Fatima as our national, our international organization is. But we're still the Blue Army at heart. We are still the church militant, let's That's be right. honest. That's, That's what, right. what we have to be on earth. And we can never forget that. You yes. know, that doesn't mean that we, that we don't change. Yeah. You know, words are words, but, but we are. We, we, we are this, this, this army of prayer and reparation. And reparation is a very big part of it. You know, um, I always look at things from a little bit of a science background and what is, uh, what is Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? Yeah. We have to make up for things that happen. Okay, yeah. and, and I think you find that there's a, um, uh, you know, our, we, had, we had a chaplain. We have a beautiful hotel retreat center in Fatima, Portugal, Domus Pachas. How large and is it? It's uh, 110 rooms. We can ac that's, accommodate that's about 225 great. people. Wow. We have a beautiful auditorium. We have a Latin chapel, and we have the only Byzantine chapel mm -hmm. 
in Fatima. You know, wow. it's really a beautiful That's place. Cool. And that was all in line with, with the Eastern world, okay, the Eastern church. And uh, in many years there, we housed the very famous icon of Kazan, which, came, which was the okay. icon of the mm -hmm. Romanov family. Mm -hmm. And um, through, because our founder took possession of it to save it with the promise that when it could go back to Russia, it mm -hmm. would go back. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, a delegation brought it back and gave it to the Orthodox Church, to, to uh, uh, Patriarch Alexei back then. Yeah. But what, what, reason I, what I'm saying is we had, a, we had a chaplain there. We talk about what that aspect of the Fatima message. Right. Father McSherry was an American Irishman with a gruff voice and he was, you know, and, say, and I would bring many groups, of course, over and say, Father, you know, um, what is the Fatima message? And he would say, reparation, reparation. Yeah. Eucharistic reparation. Mm. And that's what it comes down to, mm. you know, because because keep in mind in the first three apparitions of the children in 1916, you know, in the third of the angelic apparitions, he brought the host and, and the precious blood. Okay, Eucharistic reparation and gave those beautiful prayers of reparation yeah. and the adoration to God in the Blessed Sacrament. And Sister Lucia later said that in many ways those were the most important apparitions at Fatima because it gave them the spiritual foundation to understand better what was given to them the following year by Our Lady. What are, uh, what are we repairing? We're repairing for sin. <clears throat> Regards, regarding the Eucharist, yeah. what's been done against the Eucharist that we have to repair? Well, I mean, many blasphemies against the Eucharist, most certainly, but Eucharistic reparation is also making reparation for sin in general. Okay, because it is reconciliation. It's a reconciliation that was given to us on Holy Thursday. Right. You know, that I will be with you till the end. Well, it's through, you know, when, when you spoke earlier about, you know, Our Lady giving her son, you know, mm -hmm. he gave yeah. back and stays with us, you know, yeah. to this day. So every morning we go to Mass, mm -hmm. you know, what are we we're receiving that, you know, it's like, I think to myself, if there's a day you don't go to Mass, and not, not, not to say anything, because people don't get to Mass every day, but I, my wife and I try and do a pretty good job of getting there most every day because, because we almost feel starving if we don't go. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think uh, it's that because that is what was given to us. Our Lady gave her son, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, that's what he gave back to be with us constantly. Right, and to be with us constantly, to be holy, to, to be, be holy. the best husband you can be. You're, Absolutely. You know, you're trying to save yeah. the world, yes, but yeah. you're trying to save yourself. You're trying to save your marriage. You're yeah. trying to save your family from the evils of this world that, uh, that are at rage with us. Well, I, Mother Teresa put it best. Somebody said, how best can we, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but how best we bring peace to the world? And she said, what? Go home and love your family. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think that's really what it comes. It starts. It starts in the most basic unit, mm -hmm. obviously the family, and your community, and then it builds from there. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. uh, pause at this point. We're going to carry you over to the next segment. Uh, Dave Carollo is here with us, executive director for the World Apostolate of Fatima, BlueArmy.com. The mission is to learn, live, and spread the message of Fatima. Become a part of the army. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, we're visiting today with David Carollo. Before we continue our discussion with David, we're going to hear from Catherine Hadro. Now, Catherine is the host of EWTN Pro Life Weekly. Now, Catherine, did I hear you're speaking with the Louisiana Attorney General this week? Tell us about that. Hi, Jim and Joy. Yes, that's right. I speak with Jeff Landry this week, the Louisiana Attorney General, about a recent federal appeals court ruling. The court recently upheld a law requiring abortion providers in the state have admitting privileges at a nearby hospital. You would think a law like that would have wide support. It is about health care for women after all, but abortion advocates often push back on these type of regulations. We break it all down at the state's attorney general and shine a light on his pro-life leadership as well. And in other news, October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month. We introduce you to a handful of young adult Catholics who have Down syndrome and are students at George Mason University. The university has a program that empowers students with intellectual and developmental disabilities 
to continue their education. It's really an incredible program and I can't wait to introduce it to you all. And while I have you, Jim and Joy, we want to empower all our EWTN viewers to get involved in the pro-life movement this week. There's always something you can do. To find out this week's call to action, go to ProLifeWeekly.com. Again, that's ProLifeWeekly.com. And of course, I hope you tune in to EWTM Pro Life Weekly at 10 p.m. this Thursday and again on 10 a.m. this Sunday. Now, back to you at home. Catherine, thank you so much. Keeping the pro-life message front and center. David Carollo continues with us, Executive Director for the World Apostolate of Fatima. That's BlueArmy.com. One of your key callings is to bring Fatima to the people. Tell us about your publishing. Yeah, well, we, we publish books. We've been, like I say, in our 71-year history, we have our publishing arm. We publish our magazine, Soul Magazine. Soul Magazine has been published now since uh, actually 1950, three years into the time of the apostolate. And as time goes on, of course, we're going to more of a digital platform, yeah. but we still print the magazine because that's still the, the preference. It's beautifully it's, done, it's high quality. We get many, good. many awards. Yeah. I mean, we've it's really been nice. given many awards for this magazine over the years and recently, as recently as this year. Um, because I think our, well, our staff, I mean, I could take all the credit, I guess, they great job, David, yeah, yeah. but no, I mean, our good people are, 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 are I mean, I, so many people that are part of this, the past, mm -hmm. Barb Ernster is our communications director, Patrick Sabat, you met Patrick, he was on the show with me last year, Deacon Bob Ellis, and so many, I mean, Megan, Megan Pritchard, who was our, our graphics person, I mean, all these people really put their heart into mm -hmm. doing this, and I, I, I'm forgetting people, I'm not putting everybody's name out there, but, but it's a team, it's a team effort, yeah. and this magazine has been very, very important to us. We also publish um, uh, several other books, of course, many books over the years. Our founder wrote 35 books, yes. John Hafford, and those are all available on, on, on our website, both on in print and online. We're, 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 really, we're, we're really putting another big effort to get his, his books out there because they're just amazing. Mm -hmm. And what was important and what was relevant in 1947 is relevant today, yes. okay? And I think the more we realize that, you know, what's old is what's new. In 1947, when they brought the Pilgrim Version statue here, the original international Pilgrim Version mm -hmm. that we had here yes. last year, when you recall, we were on the show, that statue has been touring now for 71 years. Oh, Bring Fatima to the people, and then we had our travel company, bring the people to Fatima. Mm -hmm. So our travel company, Ave Maria Pilgrimages, AveMariaPilgrimages.com is, our, is our, our website. We bring people not only to Fatima, to our hotel, but to the Holy Land, to Poland, to all over, because, because we want to bring the people to the places of our faith and bring the faith to them. That's what this apostolate is really all about, you know. But as far as publishing, you know, we have many books. We work with the Sisters of Coimbra, the Sisters in Coimbra, Portugal, where Sister Lucia lived for 57 of those years. Mm -hmm. Remember, Francisco and Jacinta died in, you know, within two and three years after the apparitions. Sister Lucia lived to 98. She lived until 2005. Mm -hmm. In those 88 years after the apparitions, she lived 57 of those years with the sisters at the Carmel of Coimbra. So we work in cooperation with them and we publish their books here in English. Of course, The Pathway Under the Gaze of Mary, mm -hmm. uh, a book which is well known. It's carried here on EWTN. Uh, I was on with Doug Keck. We did a, mm -hmm. we did a bookmark on this book a couple years ago. And this is a treasure right here. This is Sister Lucia's rosary meditation book. These were her meditations. Oh, wow. And when you do the first Saturday devotion mm -hmm. and you pray five decades of the rosary and then right. you meditate for 15, 15 minutes mm -hmm. on, the, on the other mysteries, what better way to do it than the way Sister Lucia did? Mm -hmm. She received that apparition and she teaches us how to do this. So these are very important. These are all available what uh, treasures. On, at bluearmy.com. And of course, we also publish, and this, I hate, this, mm -hmm. is, this is a bittersweet one for me. This is Father Andrew Apostoli's last book. Mm -hmm. We published this with him right before he died last year. He died, um, you know, we were on October 13th. We had our big event, yeah. which we do every year. And uh, Father Andrew was there on October 13th of 17 for the 100th anniversary of the miracle of the sun, and he died 60 days later. Mm -hmm. But he was with us until the end, you know. And I think, you know, it's just uh, very special, of course, mm -hmm. and did a lot with Father, he's a big part. Of course, the Franciscan friars right. are, you know, Father Lou Fletcher, I think, was recently on the show with mm -hmm. you. He was with us at the last event in his place. Many people part of the Blue Army. David, thank you so much for being with us, and we thank look you. forward to being with you on Friday again. Looking forward to it. To unpack it. more about this worldwide Fatima apostolate, and to reflect some on the centennial and yeah, the fruits exactly. Of it. That's good. Everybody sign me a pledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> EW10 family celebration is November 3rd, so make your plans to come to Jacksonville, Florida. God bless you.
God bless all of your loved ones. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.